Hello, I'm Adrian Storrs. I'm the founder and chairman of the Stockport Volleyball Club. When did you start your role as chairman? Started the role as chairman in uh, 2015, uh, immediately after when we uh, established the club. Uh, what are your long-term aims for the club? Well, uh, I think it's fair to say that I've probably created a monster. Uh, it started off as a small-scale enterprise and is getting bigger by the year. Um, but our long-term aims are to continue to work with the age groups we work with at the moment, which tends to be anything from beginners to intermediates to academy for young people. And then we also have National Volleyball League teams for the men and for the women. Uh, long-term aspirations are to continue with those particular sectors and uh, improve performances in each quarter. Are you hoping to get more people into volleyball as well with uh, the reputation of the club growing? I think there's been a, there's been a phenomenal growth. I mean, uh, obviously COVID-19 uh, hit us all and that was a, a temporary cessation of activities. Uh, but since then, the numbers coming to volleyball has been bigger than ever before. I think some of that's come through some of the media coverage. Uh, it's often referred to just how big volleyball is growing in Japan after a particular anime that a lot of the young people have started watching. Um, but as a sport, it's, it's just getting more and more popular with the young people, and that's the dominant group where we're seeing the massive growth. Right. What would a win in the final on Sunday do for the reputation of the club? For us, uh, obviously we're, we're excited. Um, believe it or not, it wasn't one of our targets at the start of the year. Uh, our targets were for NBL men promotion and NBL women promotion, uh, of which uh, only the women uh, are still in with a fighting chance. Um, but undoubtedly getting to a national final for the first time for a club that's very much in its infancy, we are a young club, uh, it will be uh, a major accolade for us and probably give more and more people the opportunity to know that we have finally arrived. Okay. So you've had many exciting events happen so far this year, with the women reaching the quarterfinals, hosting GP2 and now the men's team are in the national shield final, so what else can we expect from these teams? Well, I think this season's coming to an end, so I think everything we've achieved now uh, has been achieved. The only final things, uh, as you quite rightly allude to, are the men's final of the Shields, which obviously we will do our best. Uh, we're facing some challenges already in terms of team selection for Saturday, but we'll do our best in that final. Um, and also, uh, we're just hoping and keeping our fingers crossed that our women get what I would argue they thoroughly deserve and, and secure the promotion from uh, W3N up to the second division, uh, particularly bearing in mind that's our inaugural season in the National Volleyball League, so again that's a major achievement for us. Uh, are you worried about the experience that the London Aces have going against the final? I think uh, I'm, I'm pleased with playing London Aces. Uh, I mean what is very, very clear is they're a much more established club. They've been around for a lot longer, they've got a pedigree, they've even got a pedigree in the Shield itself, they've been to the National Volleyball uh, centre in Kettering on, on numerous occasions. We have beaten them home and away this year in the league, but I have to say when it comes to the cup, and like I say, bearing in mind the challenges we've got, it's a whole new game, so we're taking nothing for granted whatsoever. Um, but no, we've enjoyed playing them before, and uh, may the best team win on the day. And are there any exciting talents in any of your age groups uh, that could be destined for big things? Depends what the definition of big things are. I mean, I'm excited by all of them, I have to say that as a community club, I get my biggest buzz from the young people that uh, join us. I think uh, if I were to pick on a, a few examples, uh, a few examples I'll pick on uh, very much started from the basement in terms of new to the sport, young people in the sport. So Matthew Rowe is a good example. Uh, Matthew Rowe, I'll give his Christian name and his surname because of his age, because he's now old enough. Um, started as a beginner, uh, worked his way up through our junior channels, uh, ended up being captain for our academy team, and he's the only and the first time we've had a junior that's gone all the way to get into the National Volleyball League squad. So he will actually be going to Kettering. So that's very, very exciting when you see somebody that, that started at the bottom and worked their way up. Uh, the other two are youngsters, so I'll just give their um, uh, Christian names. Um, we have Anika and Sophia. Uh, Sophia uh, very interesting, uh, 
actually British kickboxing champion as well, for a young girl of her age. Um, but came to us from scratch, had not played volleyball, worked way up, uh, got into the academy team, has uh, now picked in the Northwest Regional Squad, and she's now a member of the National Volleyball Women's Team here, as well as just being picked for England Cadets. So you can't say much more than that, and she's phenomenal, especially on serving. And I'm delighted that one of her compatriots, they're a, they're, they're a good couple together, but there's also a young girl called Anika. Anika, uh, again, started from scratch, local girl who um, uh, worked way into the academy team, now goes to NBL Women's Training, and has just been selected for the Northwest Regional Squad again. So um, I think uh, this fresh young blood is quite exciting and gives us some optimism for the future. All right, okay, thank you, Richard. It's been a pleasure, pleasure to meet you. Thank you, thank you very much, Richard.